reading for today is from Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. <coughs> for I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come into mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. And as people as a delight, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days. For one who dies in a hundred years will be considered youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them, they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, <clears throat> or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and the descendants as well, before they call, I will answer. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. So says the Lord. So I'm just the reading. Bill is modeling the perfect way to get down from the altar. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> yes. Um, I hope you don't mind. I think I'm going to ask Rick as soon as I start here to make sure the shutters are close so the choir doesn't have the sound there. So he'll be doing that. So wonderful. So I want you, I told you now, about this wonderful event that happened this past Friday night. We were post to around 90 people for dinner. It was a dinner organized by Tammy LaFall and the Hands and Hearts program that we started here at the church. Tammy's efforts brought young families uh, and their children into our church for a warm and inviting time of sharing among themselves. The sanctuary we provided was part of something we have always provided in our own ways, but you know, this was a little different in that it was very specifically welcoming of people from across denominational spectrums, and most especially people who have no faith community were here. Um, for three hours, there was a shared meal with a shared purpose, which made a difference. It sounds a lot like the efforts of our justice and witness community, <coughs> the team effort, doesn't it? Now this next week, you can make a difference, reaching out beyond our doors and faith, when we raise funds to feed families here at Thanksgiving, with this Thanksgiving meal that we have done last year, and we continue to do again this year. I hope you can, came today bustling with generosity. I hope you came ready with your checkbook or your cash, or even your pledge card, of course, for the other missions of our church. When we pack those meals next Sunday, you'll be taking part in an unselfish act of love. We know that love is the hallmark of Jesus' ministry, and therefore it should be our hallmark also, which it is. But we need to understand that loving action is something understood beyond denominational and faith boundaries. It's a, it goes across the world, this thing called love, and our love can only be felt by your immediate and generous support of this effort. Please do not leave today 
without providing for a family or pledging to me that you will in the next day or two. This thing we know as love is needed in great lots by these days, in these days, my friends. We know that we are a divided nation, perhaps even a divided town. Before and after our national election, we have been witness to a disagreement that I am not certain either side wants to agree is the disagreement that the other side thinks it is. We are locked in a struggle. And either side will declare that they are the unfortunate side of the wolf-lamb relationship. One side declares that they've been devoured for years, while the other side declares devouring yet to come. Now the love that he was here downstairs in the fellowship hall on Friday night, if, stati if statistically representational of America, uh, that group of people, of 90, only 25% of them are members of a faith community. If statistically representational of America, of those 90, less, so let's say about only 20 of them were actually belonging to a faith community. In other words, only one in four of them ever set foot in a church or a synagogue. And yet, they expressed a love for the world, despite being either thrilled with Tuesday's election results or devastated by them. <laughs> so this being Stewardship Sunday, I hope that your love is ready to be shown in a tangible way. We are the people of the church, and only we are going to be able to make a difference here. Only we can make a difference here. While we urge others and ourselves to reach out elsewhere, no one that is not already a part of our fellowship is going to reach into here to make a difference. We do not have some magical benefactor who will look at our balance sheet and make up for what we have not provided. The pledges and actual financial support received in the past here at the church have made possible a sanctuary for love to incubate. We are host for funerals to families who have no church. We are host to couples starting off life together in their way. We are a place for karate lessons and big band practices for Alcoholic Anonymous members by the hundreds. We are host to the Board of Trade when they ready their Christmas decorations you see as you drive through our town. We welcome quilters every Monday morning here. And most of all, think about this, we are the only church in this town who openly welcomes all people by naming them. By naming them. And not just saying all are welcome with a nudge and a wink. You want the lamb and the wolf to eat together? To feed one another? Support this church with more than just a smile. Our scripture hints that a new heaven and a new earth are promised for God's people. But I do not know when God will provide that. In the meantime, you and I are going to be responsible. Now, Suzanne and I give generously because we believe in the mission that this body brought me here to enact. You provide a hope and a love in this town that is bold. It is bold. I pray that you also will be God's emissaries in a world that needs housing for the homeless, food for the hungry, and most especially, a place designated for the wolves and the lambs of this world to feed together 
and not upon one another. If you've given in a manner that is so-so, or you realize now more than ever the great and unique mission that this church provides, beyond the willingness of all the other churches in town, then don't be afraid to amend your pledge. <laughs> you can do greater. Why not be seen as a titan of this community? I'd love to look up to you that way. So I hope you are bold, as this church has been bold in, in, in its action to the town. So friends, did you bring your pledge card today? Have you turned it in already, or do you have it now? Make sure that if you have your pledge card, that when our ushers come to you for a regular offering, that you place your pledge card in there as a pledge for a new heaven and a new earth, brought forth, even yes, right now, by this your body of Christ. I pray that you pledge with generosity and heart and love. My friends, I thank you for all of your support that you have given through the years. And may God's word be our word. My friends, may the Lord be with you. And also with you.